Hello everybody. Welcome to the next talk in the Yugabyte DB Tech Talk series. My name is Sid Chaudhary. I'm the VP of product here at Yugabyte. And today I'm going to talk to you about the Raft replication in Yugabyte DB. Let's dive right in. Let's understand why data replication is important. First of all, what is data replication? It's the approach of keeping multiple replicas of data on physically isolated hardware. Now, why do we do data replication? Because failure in, in one hardware instance should not impact the other hardware instances. So the net result is your data becomes more durable, and it's also highly available since any of the remaining available replicas can, can serve client requests. Now, once we start using replicas to start uh, serving client requests, that also gives us higher throughput and lower latencies since there are now more replicas available to serve the clients. With that, let's dive into Yugabyte DB. Now, as you may know, Yugabyte DB is the transactional high-performance database uh, for building planet-scale cloud services. It's actually purpose-built from the ground up with an API layer that is both NoSQL and SQL at the same time. We have API compatibility with Cassandra, Redis, and PostgreSQL. At the heart of Yugabyte DB is a storage and replication architecture that's cloud native. It's built for the cloud era where it can tolerate a lot of failures and also ensure that you have infrastructure portability very similar to what we have seen in the containers. Let's look a little bit under the hood of a three node Yugabyte DB cluster. As you can see here, we have uh, the, the main data process known as YBT server. Uh, there are three instances of that. And each instance has what we call as a DocDB storage engine. It's actually uh, a highly customized version of RocksDB that uh, now is, is uh, able to store lots of data, ever-growing data, um, and is, is the data inside that is replicated using Raft consensus protocol. Now, Yugabyte DB uses Raft for both data replication as well as election of leaders. Now, the concept of leaders comes because of Yugabyte DB being a auto-sharded database. So we take any table, let's take a Cassandra table, for example, we automatically shard it into lots of small chunks. We call them shards or tablets. And each tablet has a leader. And the YB master, which is the, the shard metadata and cluster-wide operation manager, it ensures that each YBT server has an equal number of leaders as well as their followers. Now, this sharding and replication architecture is the heart of how uh, Yugabyte DB achieves a lots of its guarantees, um, as, as we'll see in the next few slides. Let's start uh, with the most basic guarantee, and that guarantee is of strong consistency. Uh, and that, achieve, that is achieved by ensuring that as writes are coming into the database, we achieve zero data loss persistence. What, how is that achieved? Let's, let's take one by one. So, Let's say that there is a client that is trying to update a record in tablet 3. Now, it, it reaches YBT server 2, but YBT server 2 does not have the leader for the tablet 3. It's actually present in YBT server 3, as we can see. So YBT server 2 automatically redirects that request to the YBT, YB master, or master leader at this point of time, to, to so that that YB master now can provide the up-to-date uh, shard to node mapping information to the, the client. So, and, and the client thereafter caches that information so that for future uh, references to tablet 3, it can directly reach YBT server 3, and it does not have to go through YBT server 2. And now, the request is now received. The right request on tablet 3 is now received by YBT server 3. Since YBT server 3 has tablet 3 leader, tablet 3 leader uh, sends out an, an update request synchronously to its two followers on the two other nodes, and it waits for 
one of them to uh, commit that transaction in its local DocDB and, and send a response back. Because once that is available, now it can commit itself. And as a result, two copies out of three has have now been committed. And, and we have now achieved what is known in, in, uh, in, the, in distributed systems as consensus. And now we, we can actually acknowledge the client request back, saying that this data, this update request is now persisted in at least two of the three nodes. And that ensures that if, as you will see in, in future, um, as, as nodes go down, as new nodes get added, does not matter, this update never gets lost. So let's, let's go to that, that side of the house. And that comes, uh, we call that as continuous availability or always on availability. And it, it shows the resilient and, and self-healing nature of Yugabyte DB. So let's, let's assume that the node uh, 2, which houses YBT Server 2 and YB Master 2, actually dies. It, it crashes completely. Um, the, the client uh, is, is now, no, no client will be able to be a, access that particular node 2. Now, the remaining two nodes know that they have just lost all the tablet leaders that were housed in YBT Server 2. So they auto-elect new leaders in a matter of a couple of seconds so that future writes can continue to work as if nothing has happened. And that's what we see. Tablet 2 leader, which was previously housed in YBT Server 2, is now present in YBT Server 1. Now, the client does not know about all these changes that have happened in the system. It will try to reach YBT Server 2, let's say, assuming that, let's say, that was the locus nearest uh, data center that was available. And it, it sees that that node is actually unreachable. So now it actually goes back to um, the master leader and, and tries to get an up-to-date shard to ma node uh, mapping information and then caches it again for future. And now it knows that the tablet 2 leader is actually housed in YBT server 1. So that that request gets redirected to uh, YBT server 1. Remember, all of this is happening actually automatically and, and the application developer who wrote the, the client code is not aware of all these changes that are happening um, essentially in the operational side of the house as the, as the application is deployed in, in any cloud uh, that's out there. So now Tablet2 leader owns the responsibility of, uh, of actually sending it out to the remaining Tablet2 follower on YBT Server 3. It, since there are only now two nodes, it has to actually wait for uh, the uh, YBT Server 3 to actually commit the update. And, and then uh, it, it commits itself and, and sends the information and acknowledge the write back to the client uh, code. So as, as the resilient and self-healing nature comes by through the auto-leader election, which is again based on raft, um, and ensuring that this write that was coming in from, from clients uh, does not get lost. It continues to remain uh, available and, and served. The same Raft replication architecture actually helps Yugabyte DB do rapid scaling, and, and that includes both scale out as well as scale in. Um, and, and that allows applications to add and remove nodes at complete will. You can add nodes in the morning, you can remove them in the evening, um, and you can keep doing so without uh, you know, impacting your application both from performance and availability standpoint. So let's take the example of a new node, N4, being added to this three node cluster. So um, what happens is uh, YB master one, uh, YB master knows that a new node has been added to the system. It directs uh, leaders and followers to get rebalanced onto this, this new node. So it, it knows uh, that YBT server one has two leaders, whereas others have one leader each. So let me move y tablet four leader onto YBT server four. And it also knows that it can move uh, two followers um, from the existing T servers into this YBT server four. So the net result will be that there will be one leader and two followers in all the four nodes. 
and and that's that's what is the end result of, of this uh, you know uh, rebalancing operation is now as soon as the tablet 4 leader is available uh, on the new node ybt server 4 it is now able to accept re write requests um, and tablet 3 tab uh, follower and tablet follower 1 follower are available to serve read requests the the end result of all this is that um, we are able to draw out maximum throughput or maximum resource utilization um, as soon as uh, in a new node has the ability to uh, start serving client requests. Okay, and we can do the exactly the reverse operation, which is the scale in operation. If we want to remove uh, that new node four and the rebalancing will now happen on the remaining three nodes. Let's look at performance, and performance is usually measured in terms of two things. One is throughput, and the other is latencies. Now, in, in transactional OLTP applications, the read throughput and read latency is of extreme importance because users are able to perceive whether their requests are able to be served fast enough, and enough of their requests are being served fast enough. So uh, Yugabyte DB is optimized to ensure that from the read standpoint, it has the absolute best performance. It's actually 3x the throughput of a traditional uh, quorum-based uh, NoSQL like Cassandra um, or, or MongoDB, um, as well as extremely low predictable P99 latencies. Now, how is it able to achieve so? Because um, essentially the hard work is already done on the, the right path by having a leader for a small uh, set of data, which is our tablet, and ensuring that all writes pass through that, that single uh, tablet leader. Um, as a result, on the read path, we can, if, if, for, for if the client uh, wants strong reads, then we can just serve it off directly from that uh, tablet leader. And if, if the client is okay with bounded staleness or also known as follower reads, then any of the followers can be used to serve that read. So the net result is when a read comes in, a single node serves the request to the client. It never involves any other node in the system uh, while having the client blocked on, on that request. Net result, low latency, high throughput. Each one, each one of these nodes is doing um, whatever it can without involving anybody else. Uh, Yugabyte DB is actually an open source Apache 2 project. Uh, welcome you to uh, watch us, star us on, on our GitHub project. You can even actually try out um, various scenarios on your laptop. We support all the major uh, um, ways of installing the software, um, including Docker and Kubernetes. Uh, you can just go to the link here and, and try these things out. Uh, with that, I have reached the end of my talk. Thank you very much for watching and listening.